Hi everyone, I'm Scott Wilson, the Regional Trauma System Coordinator for Metrolina Trauma Advisory Committee, and I appreciate the opportunity to discuss EMS trauma handoffs with you today. We are only talking about your bedside trauma report, not the radio call-in, but we can always revisit that later if there's interest. Briefly, what is MTAC? We are one of eight trauma regional advisory committees in the state of North Carolina. Each RAC is sponsored by their region's lead trauma center. And while I'm based out of CMC, MTAC serves as a resource for all hospitals, all trauma centers, and all EMS agencies in our region, focusing on how we can improve trauma care through performance improvement, education, and outreach, to name a few. Everyone is probably familiar with this scene, and if you haven't yet experienced it, I'm sure you will soon. This is played out every day at trauma centers in our region as the trauma team waits on a patient to arrive by EMS. Each of you knows that this can be pretty intimidating to walk into with everyone staring at you, ready to pounce, while you're trying to get as much info about the patient delivered while also unstrapping seatbelts, pulling off monitor cables, untangling your IV line, and more. You've also probably experienced that if you start straying or talk longer than about 30 seconds that about to pounce turns into you being cut off and the patient spontaneously being moved over to the hospital stretcher, whether you're finished with your report or not, or being interrupted with questions. There may be slight variations depending on the hospital, but at all of the trauma centers in our region, Cabarrus, Caramont, Cleveland, CMC, Levine Children's, Piedmont, and Presbyterian, it should be pretty close to the same steps as we seek to standardize this process. We're only talking about major trauma that has a trauma team waiting for report. It can be used for other reports, but that is not our focus here. Regardless of which trauma center you go to, the process for receiving patients with major trauma should be as follows. When you get to the room that you're directed to, it doesn't do a whole lot of good if you're talking to yourself. So we need to make sure that everyone who needs to be there is present. This responsibility falls to the team leader. The team leader will then give you the go ahead, usually with the prompt ready for EMS report or quiet for EMS report. And then you start giving your part. Be aware that there may be a few things going on during this time, such as an ED tech or ED paramedic obtaining a manual blood pressure or starting to switch out EKG cables. When you are done with your report, the team leader will call a timeout to identify the patient. Typically, this goes like timeout, this is trauma alpha. Let's get them moved to our stretcher, get a manual blood pressure, and begin our primary assessment. EMS and the trauma team then move the patient over and the patient care continues. Exceptions are active hemorrhage, CPR in progress, airway management, or other life threats that require the patient to be immediately moved prior to report. So now, what do you say in your report? Many of you may already be using the handoff tool we are going to talk about, or something similar, whether it be by protocol or just personal choice. If so, we're just reinforcing best practice. If not, we're asking you to start. Nationwide, there is a standardized template, MIST, which stands for mechanism, including age, sex, and time of injury, injuries, vital signs, and treatment. It is used for verbal handoffs for trauma patients between pre-hospital personnel and the trauma teams in the emergency departments. The MIST format allows for a quick and concise method to get across the most important information about our trauma patient so that care can be transferred and additional treatment can begin. Many of us use it or parts of it without even realizing that we are. It's been noted that this template may not be in use in this region, at least not formally, which allows for a lot of vital information to be missed, extraneous information to be included, and unnecessarily adds more time to the report with extra questions that have to be asked. There have been multiple journal articles and education pieces discussing handoffs, with many speaking to the value of the missed report or variations of it. Additionally, here are just a few of the many research studies that have been done both nationally and internationally assessing the value of using a standardized handoff tool when given a report. 
Now those previous studies were great and proved the value of a consistent bedside report, but a lit review found that none looked at the pre-hospital use with the missed tools effectiveness and improvement in patient care. So what do you do when you can't find what you need in previous research studies? You do your own. So I put in for and was approved by the Institutional Review Board, or IRB, to do a quality study with three stages. First is confirming the actual need or the fact that there is a problem. Some of you may have seen me in the ED or even been approached by me asking you some questions about your report. Next, assuming that a problem was identified during stage one, education would then take place. Since you're watching this today, that means I identified opportunities for improvement in phase one, which we'll discuss next. Then finally, after this education, we need to prove that it made a difference. So I'll be back in the ED observing again to hopefully show that we made an impact on patient care. Looking at different styles of verbal reports, the MIST format seemed to fit what we do in EMS and was the most versatile, and it can cover both trauma and medical if you choose to use it that way. What I did was observe the communication at bedside between EMS providers and the trauma team at CMC, noting what was or was not said in the report. Using the MIST format, an ideal report would be less than 30 seconds and sound something like this. This is a 30-year-old male involved in an MVC at approximately 1,300 hours. He has C-spine tenderness, right chest wall tenderness with crepitus noted to the right ribs and obvious deformity to his left femur. His highest heart rate was 130, lowest blood pressure was 98 over 54, and lowest GCS was 14. He's in a C collar and his left leg is in traction. I've established an 18 gauge IV in his left AC with 500 of saline and 50 mics of fentanyl administered. Do you have any questions? This format can also be used for trauma transfers using information you obtain from the referring hospital. Now for the study. Real quick, for anyone interested in more specific details about the study, in summary, there were 105 EMS handoffs observed over a six month time frame. Most were trauma code ones or the highest level of activation, which is based off the pre-hospital radio report. The majority were scene calls and three quarters were adult patients followed by geriatric and then pediatric. As I have more time with the data, I'll look more for trends, but the average EMS experience was almost four years. The average EMS age was 30 and a little over 70% of the providers were male. So what did I find? With mechanism, 23% of the time, an excellent report was given with all of the requested information, which was age, sex, mechanism, and time of injury. Great job rocking it. Unfortunately, that means that 77% of the time, we didn't deliver the full story. 61% of the time, we missed at least one thing, and then 10% of the time, we missed two or more items. A few people did give the appropriate information, but gave it out of order later in the report, and some had to be prompted to give the information. Looking closer at mechanism, believe it or not, 16% of people forgot to say how old the patient was and 10% and 9% didn't include the patient's sex or mechanism of injury respectively. One thing that really stood out as missing at 75% of the time was the time of injury. We don't think about it, but it's a valuable part of the report and it's also used in data collection. If you noticed how frequently the writer calls out to you as you're leaving, hey, what was the time of injury? This is actually a very important detail of EMS reports that is used to gauge windows like survival rates at different time intervals and certain intervention windows. For injuries, this one was just a yes or no question. Most everyone did a good job on this, but there's still room for improvement, mainly in that the info was given out of order. There is that 5% who just didn't give it at all, which is a problem that we can focus on more specifically as appropriate. Almost a third of EMS providers gave all three vital signs that we asked for. Highest heart rate, lowest blood pressure, and lowest GCS. However, over 20% had to be prompted and another 20% missed one or more of them. 
Now, what about our other vital signs like respirations or O2 saturations? We'll get to that next. More than one third of the time, we forget either the highest heart rate or lowest blood pressure in our report. But the biggest thing, as you can see, is reporting the lowest GCS. Now, back to the question about other vital signs. Two questions have come up about this portion. First, what about the other vital signs like respirations or O2 saturations? If it's pertinent or abnormal, then by all means, include them. Second was, what about current vital signs? If your current or last set of vitals are different than the extremes that you just listed, then it's totally appropriate to include those as well, either here or perhaps even after your treatment section that we'll cover next, as it would make sense to say after you gave a fluid bolus, the blood pressure increased. In the last portion of the report where treatment is covered, overall, we do a good job with two thirds of the time given the appropriate information about treatment. Unfortunately, it's a regular occurrence at 30% that there must be a prompt for things like vascular access, fluids, and drugs administered. So what's next? How will this be implemented and where? We'd like for you to start or continue using MIST in your trauma reports. Hopefully, it will be as simple as you incorporating this into your everyday practice and using it. But each trauma center has agreed to implement this method and is educating their teams to expect it when listening to your reports. The ED staffs are on board and they know the process to expect. Each time, regardless of which trauma center you're at, you should line up your beds, the team leader should prompt you to give a report, you follow the MISH format and give a report and then transfer the patient over to the ED stretcher after the timeout. We're working with our teams in the hospitals to reinforce and remind them of this so they can give you the opportunity to do your report. So again, regardless of which trauma center you go to, the process for receiving patients with major trauma should be as follows. When you get to the room you're directed to, the team leader will ensure that everyone is there and will then give you the go ahead, usually with the prompt ready for EMS report or quiet for EMS report. When you're done giving your report, the team leader will then call a timeout to identify the patient and then EMS and the trauma team will move the patient over. So now what do you say in your report? As mentioned at the beginning, the MIST report is a quick and concise way to communicate the most important information about our patients to the trauma team. Starting off with the M and letting them know age, sex, mechanism, and time of injury, and then moving to I, where you list major trauma from head to toe. Next, we mention our vital signs extremes with highest heart rate, lowest blood pressure, and lowest GCS and then finish off with treatment performed to include access, fluids, and meds given. If their latest vital signs are different, you can include those as well. For example, after listing treatment, you can say their latest blood pressure. Additional information can and should be given if pertinent to that particular section or after MIST is completed. We'll be posting this in the ED front rooms as a visual aid. And as with anything, we may find some things need tweaking, and if so, we'll adjust and move forward. I can't say this strongly enough. This is just a request to improve our patient care collectively at the hospitals. You are still beholden to your medical director and local EMS administration. If your medical director or supervisor tells you to use a different method, then oblige them and follow their instruction. If you have any questions about the MIST handoff tool, don't hesitate to reach out to me. You can also email me if you're interested in hearing about other trauma topics or would like clinical follow-up on a patient that you transported. Thank you for your time. Be sure to check out our website at metrolinatrauma.org or follow us on social media for more educational content.